I've got my test mask. That's the important one, right? <laughs> I should have. I was told we might have to physically show it so it's out. Well, I'm a social oh, one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'll give my one. Okay. What's your first name? Yeah, I'm not doing All right, so I, I called about your car. Yeah. It's still showing. It's still showing suspended. Um, right. You might want to call. We might do the call after this is all over. What time? Uh, it's after four. All right. So. Yeah. So, yeah well, I mean, hopefully, we'll be able to uh, have Monday. When you get to where you're stopping on Monday, it'll be available. If not, please call me. I'll, you know, I'll be able to. I feel like the mask makes me want to touch my face more. Uh, okay, and what's your first name? Uh, Katie. Okay, here's your CED and NATO orders. All the you. something that's going on whether they're just still nervous or scared about what's happening or whatever it is they need to reach out to the chain of command and I will guarantee you that we will do our best to help make sure they're taken care of 42 days now that started out. please again make sure I need you guys to focus on what you need to do go get done get back safely, we'll take care of situations here that we need to take care of. 
Sure, the, uh, the challenges have been tremendous. So when the uh, virus you know, started taking over uh, America, uh, it was a travel ban, and we didn't know uh, how it was gonna apply to the deployment. Uh, these guys have been in limbo for weeks, not knowing if they're going or not. And uh, we prepared all along like we were. And then here about uh, two days ago, just found out we were. And as a tribute to our commanders and uh, our training managers, they were ready to go. Sure, we have about uh, 200 people in theater 
Uh, right now we're sending about 50 over and uh, about 50 will come home. Uh, it's operations and maintenance. So start with maintenance. We have uh, folks who maintain the aircraft and keep them, uh, keep them flying. Then we have operations, which is your air crew, uh, who fly the aircraft and then some support uh, personnel, such as uh, aircrew flight equipment, we make sure the crews and the airplanes have what they need. Uh, and then a few other administrative support personnel. Uh, I'd just like to say that I love these guys and, and their performance uh, and not only getting ready and the way they performed over there despite this stress has just been, it's been amazing and, uh, and I'm really humbled to be, uh, to be a part of it. Well, a lot of the challenge has been the uncertainty because uh, with the, uh, the stop movement orders, our deployers didn't know whether they were really going to be going or not. Thus, their families didn't know they were going to really be going or not. Thus, the employers really didn't know if they were going to be going or not. And then you, with those three levels of uncertainty, it brings a lot of stress on our deployers because they don't really know what to tell anybody. And they're not the decision makers. And we had to relay a lot of that up through the uh, Office of Secretary of Defense, OSD, to let them know, okay, we got to make some decisions sometime soon, because not only our deployers, but the people who are overseas who are waiting to come back also have that uncertainty. And their families and employers have the uncertainty. And this is something that the active duty doesn't really ever have to deal with. So uh, we had to voice this so that they would at least try to understand and try to understand that this is one of the reasons why if they um, eliminate the uncertainty and give a certain amount of planning, our deployers, their families, and the employers will be happy to support the United States. But if they're always uncertain and walking on eggshells, then we're going to create anxiety and resentment. Watching our guardsmen do their thing reminds me of the spirit of America and why we are still the greatest country on this planet. It's because even though we have a lot of this fear and the, the, the lockdown, all of these people here are still with their figurative weapons in the holsters, hands on the, on the stocks, ready to pull and go. They are ready to go at a moment's notice, even with all of the, uh, the anxiety going on throughout the rest of the country. And I, I, I read a story about uh, uh, some factory workers in, in one state, I think it might have been Delaware, but, but uh, they actually lived uh, on, in cots in that, in that factory for 40 days or 30 days so that they can make protective, uh, uh, personal protective equipment for the nation. That is the spirit of America. And you're seeing the spirit of America here with the West Virginia Air National Guard because they had no idea what the decision was gonna be, but they were ready to fire at, uh, as soon as the trigger was pulled. And as you see, they, they are like tigers let out of a cage and they are gonna go kick butt 